I'm Matteo, AOY on the internet and today I'm gonna uh, talk to you about simple auth. Uh, we've been talking about it, uh, there is one feature that uh, we didn't cover so that's what I'm going to cover today. So one of the, one of the things that you can do with simple auth is to limit uh, the interactions that the authenticated user can do. For instance, uh, we know that whenever we go to create a um, token, we click on the tab and add access token, there is this thing called resource. Um, so this is going to be used as a way of limiting permissions. And uh, some of you may wonder uh, if we already do this with roles, why do we need this? So this is uh, just a way of uh, making extra sure that your authenticated users via token can only access whatever you expect them to, to access. So um, to create a new resource uh, you just need to go to configuration, people, token auth settings and then there is a tab called resources. So I created two of them. I'm gonna just delete them right now so that you can see how they are created. So um, you can see that the, the simple auth module comes with the authentication and global resources which are the ones that we are used to deal with um, but it allows you as an administrator to create new resources. Um, <clears throat> I call them resources because in the token bearer specification for auth2 they call them resources so you can know uh, what I mean by that. So imagine that um, you want the users authenticated with the si simple auth tokens to only be able to access or to do actions related to blocks. So uh, since this is a, a fully functional authentication mechanism uh, you could do this to operate with Drupal or uh, it doesn't it is not limited to REST even if that is the most obvious example it is not limited to REST authentication. Uh, so uh, yeah you could just log in by providing uh, the header with your browser and act as the, as the authenticated user. So uh, that being said, imagine that you only want the users that are, uh, that are authenticated with this token to be able to, as I said, deal with actions related to blocks. So what I would do is I would create a new resource called blog and there we go and then add a description to limit permission checks to blog oops alright uh, and then since this is just an example, I'm just going to select a bunch of them, the ones that have the word block. And there we go. We have a new permission. So even if the user that has been authenticated has access to view articles or to access articles with the, with the REST resource, if we are providing a token that's associated to the block resource it will get they will get access denied because using a token associated with the block resource only can possibly check access for the permissions that you check in this case the block related permissions so uh, let's demonstrate that by uh, checking this test user um, this is a user called test and I don't have any token right now and I'm gonna show you that here any authenticated user 
rest. Um, any authenticated user can get on content resource. But since we are going to create uh, an access token associated to the block resource that we created here, to this one, this is not going to be checked because this access get on content resource access get on content resource is not marked. So even if this one, the authenticated user has access, since it's not marked here, any token that uh, uses this one is not going to get access. So uh, it sounds a little bit confusing, at least to me, but that's how it works. So I'm going to create a new access token and going to make it expired. To tomorrow again uh, we talked about aspirations in the first video and this should be shorter but for the sake of the example so I'm gonna select block uh, you see that there's a nice autocomplete there I'm gonna save and now I'm gonna use this token which is for the resource block to access the um, the article so we know that we need to do authorization and then bearer and then paste the token and if everything goes well i'm going to get a 403 forbidden access because the the check the access check didn't pass so um in order to to get access we would only need to click here and because of how it works view oops published content so with this two marking this two and saving now I edited this block resource to also uh, be able to check for the permissions that we need so if we make the same request again voila we get access and if we delete any of those or both of them we get access denied so uh, this is a very nice way of saying okay I'm gonna create a token that only that I know that even if a user has a lot of access throughout the site uh, this is going to this token is going to be uh, only used to do these operations. So uh, what I would do in this case, instead of perverting the block resource, I would create the rest nodes and maybe just give it a machine name that's better, uh, allows interacting or, well, actually get for content resources all right uh, and then I'm gonna select view published content and then uh, access get on content resource and click save and uh, well that's it actually uh, now I need to create a token associated to this one to the node create an access token again this is uh, my browser where I'm logged in as the test user and I'm gonna select the nodes and uh, make it spare uh, anyways I'm gonna just check right now so uh, these five minutes are okay for me so for the block we don't want the block we want the, the rest nodes um, this is the this token is for the blocks I'm gonna just uh, make sure that yep uh, is still giving me a 403 because I removed those after all and now I'm gonna paste the one for for the nodes the rest nodes and it should work huh what did I do here mm. Oh, sorry, have an extra space in there. Yeah, make sure you have an extra space uh, if you copy and paste stuff. Yeah, 
uh, by deleting the, the extra space made it work. So that's how, how you can, can use it. The, the last thing that I want to show you is how a user that creates a token for REST nodes that contains the permission view published content or get uh, on access get on content resource is going to be checked for those permissions so marking this box only allows you to be eligible to check for those permissions but if that user doesn't have this permission it's going to get a 403 right so to do that i'm going to uh, just remove this so now authenticated users will not be able to access get on content resource and save and even if we use uh, a token that says rest nodes for this authentication we are not going to get access because in order to get access with this token for this particular user both the resource and the permission for the user must allow access. So uh, let's finally check uh, here and we should get a nice 403. Yeah, that's it. Um, so that's how you can use resources and uh, make sure that your tokens only grant access to the features that you need. Thank you for watching. Ta-da!